What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Run Disney 101. It has been a couple weeks since we've had a video. We went on vacation, and then we almost got hit by a hurricane, yes. and all sorts of things. <laughs> but we are back, and we're going to continue trying to bring you an episode every week. And this week, I thought we would talk a little bit about the weather. First off, it was my idea. Yes, it was. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so uh, since, you know, we just had this hurricane scare, I thought, what would happen if you have some inclement weather during your race weekends? Um, you know, obviously we'll always hope for perfect conditions, but more often than not, you don't have perfect conditions. And that should be something you are well aware of and you prepare for in advance. Yeah, most of the races uh, in Walt Disney World are during the so-called dry season. The mild season. Mild season, yeah. yeah. But it can always happen. You never know. Yep. And it's not always rain that you're worried about either. Yep. Sometimes it can be extreme heat, and sometimes, believe it or not, it can even be cold. <laughs> yep. And the other thing to think about is it's super unpredictable, um, one year to the next, it's not going to be the same. Yep. And you can look at the weather a week out, and it can be completely different than what actually happens. Case in point, uh, we were supposed to literally be getting hit by a hurricane a few days ago. We didn't even get rain for more than, like, 20 minutes. Yep. And another thing, too, is it can be very unpredictable from day to day. Uh, for instance, uh, Walt Disney World race weekend this year was cold for the 5 and the 10K, and then the half and the full, it was very hot. Yep, people were suffering hard during the full marathon. It was way hotter than anyone had guessed it was going to be yep. in January. Yep, so we're going to kind of just go through your different weather scenarios here and talk about our experiences and, you know, what Run Disney can do and what you can do to be prepared for these weather yep. scenarios. And some things you might want to bring just in case, even if you don't use them, pack them, have them ready so that you're ready for whatever the day may end up being. So the first one is probably the big one that can be a day damper, quite literally, <laughs> and that's rain. Yes, and this is probably, I don't even want to say it's the most likely. I would say second most likely. Second most likely, yes. Uh, Florida obviously is known as the sunshine state, but I think everyone knows that we're also known for random rain showers. The good thing about Florida is oftentimes our rain showers do happen later in the day. But I would say at least once a year at a Disney race, I get at least sprinkled on, whether it be while I'm waiting in the corral, partway through the race. Um, I've never experienced a race where it's been raining the entire time, but it has happened. I believe it was Wine and Dine 2014, was known as Splash and Dash. Mm -hmm. um, now, that was still a nighttime race at the time, so again, later in the day, but I think it rained the entire time. So things like that do happen. Yeah, I have also yet to run a run Disney race in the rain, but I have ran plenty of 5 and 10Ks where you've been going through puddles and, you know, different streams that have filled up. Yeah. Always a good time, a good old mud run. One thing I would say to do is while you're training, don't be scared of running in the rain. Um, barring, like, actual dangerous conditions like lightning, mm -hmm. um... I guess maybe if you were up north, if it was like a freezing rain, if it's something that's actually going to be dangerous other than just like water hitting you, train in it. You know, it's a good yeah. experience um, to see what it feels like, to know probably like how it feels on your feet so you don't slip and fall, things like that. And then also it'll give you some practice on like how to best dry out your shoes um, when your shoes get wet. Um I would say uh, make sure you try the newspaper in the shoes is a very good one for drying them out. Yeah. Um, and if you're coming to Disney, consider bringing more than one pair of shoe, running shoes if you have them. Absolutely. That's you know. a great tip. As she said, training in the rain. Also, training in what you plan on wearing for the races. 
because something may be comfortable while you're completely dry. Being soaking wet could be a completely different story. Yeah. Uh, this is especially true for your socks. Uh, having a good pair of running socks or multiple pairs for the weekend is a great thing to have, something that's going to be moisture wicking, and that's going to help keep you from getting blisters on your feet. Uh, you're especially prone to that while it's raining. Right. Um, other things to consider during the rain, uh, you may have to slow up during the race a little bit. You probably will need to be aware that at Disney during races, you are running on several different types of, not technically terrain, but several different types of materials, and that some may be slippery. Um, I always uh, find it difficult to run through Animal Kingdom and that's actually where I have been rained on before. I always feel like it's a little more slippery there, so I'm yes, much absolutely. more careful. Um, and this is actually true even during races where it's not necessarily raining, but Disney does tend to power wash overnight. So a lot of times the roads and surfaces are wet, <laughs> even when it's not raining. <laughs> yep. Going to digress a little quick. Fun fact. Both of my fastest two 5Ks have We're been in the, the pour, like, not just rain, pouring <laughs> because rain. Because you wanted to get out of it. <laughs> That's probably true. But it also does, I mean, there are benefits, especially when you're in Florida and it's super hot. If there's rain, the sun isn't beating down on you as long, and it's probably, you're getting rain because of a cold front, oftentimes. Yep. So, there are definitely benefits. Now, worst comes to worst, if it's raining and there are is lightning um, in dangerous conditions that could cause a race to be shortened or canceled. We've talked about that before, and that's not really what this video is about, but just know that is something Disney will do, and it's something they monitor to keep everyone safe. So that's yeah. probably worst-case scenario. And it's very hard for us and for the race organizers to kind of tell, you know, what the right decision is. So if you're in that scenario, it typically tends to be a little chaotic. And they have changed things up as, like, the reality has happened, but it happened so not, or, like, so few times that they can have every contingency plan in place but when they're actually moving thousands, tens of thousands of people around during that kind of scenario, like... They learn something every time. I think it's only happened three or four times since I've been involved in Run Disney World. Yeah, and a lot of the times I can think of have been kind of in different places. Yep. So it's not always the same race start or yeah. finish location where they've decided to pull or yeah. shorten the but course. But the best thing to do in that situation is to just understand that they're doing it to keep their employees safe, their volunteers safe, and the runners safe. So that, oh, and I guess a tip for that, if there is inclement weather, is to um, be on their social media because that's how they communicate to people the easiest. Um, I don't know how they would have managed to do this before things like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook were in place because even at races where I haven't been at, I've followed their mm -hmm. updates as they've talked about like where to go, what time they think things will actually start, what's canceled, that's how they get the word out, and it really is the best way for them to do so. So make sure you're following all those all those uh, streams for updates. Yep, uh, a couple other things you can do too, if you see the forecast and it's suggesting rain during the weekend, or you just, you think it's going to rain before the race, you can always bring a cheap poncho. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying you have to race in that. I would not race in that. But having that before the race to keep you dry, at least up until the go, is definitely a huge benefit. Yes, especially because these races happen, um, especially for races like Wine and Dine, January Marathon Weekend, and sometimes Princess. Um, if it's raining in the morning, you actually might get a little chilled, and the poncho will help keep you dry and a little bit warmer beforehand. But once you start running... Usually it's at least warm enough to where you're not, you know, freezing while you're running. And it probably is going to be more refreshing than anything. And that's probably a great segue into talking about the cold. Yep. It Something, happens. It it's does surprising. happen. <laughs> uh, One year there were snow flurries. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> I think it was 11 or 12. It wasn't a year I ran, but it did flurry at one of the January races once. Yep. You're... As we've mentioned a couple times, your big two races where this is going to be an um, issue or more of an mm -hmm. issue is going to be uh, Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend 
and Princess Weekend, both the winter month races. I guess technically. I mean, Princess is could really go one way or the other, and I would say sometimes wine and dine, depending on our year. Yeah, we can vary, and I don't think I've had a princess that's been particularly cold overall. In fact, most of them have been hotter than they should have been. Yes. But just keep an, you know. Yeah. So uh, I think this is pretty well known throughout, like, racing communities, but um, if you're newer, um, uh, bring, it's like light layers is kind of how you want to go. It's not going to be near freezing it's never going to be under freezing you're not gonna have to worry about things like that it's more for a comfort level Mm -hmm. and you will see people out there during you know 40 50 degree weather if we ever have that you'll see people who are still just in like their tank top and their shorts or their skirt i'm assuming these are people from up north who (laughs) typically run in under 100 degree weather um and they're fine just chilling like that till the race starts um for me, if it is under 70 degrees, I am cold. <laughs> so I always bring like a sweatshirt or something. Even I think I, I think I even bring stuff for like that for Star Wars and put it in my suitcase just in case when I walk out during the morning I'm like mm, I'm gonna be uncomfortable. As I don't want to worry about being uncomfortable while I'm worried about like running the race. So. Yeah, it's always good to have, and one of the things that a lot of runners will do is they'll buy what we call throwaways mm-hmm. for the race. So all you do is, you know, a week or two before the race, or even earlier if you Sorry. really want, yeah, <laughs> go to uh, Goodwill. Goodwill or any of those Salvation Store. Army, yeah, and buy basically the cheapest couple of sweatshirts that you mm-hmm. can. You know, they usually cost literally $2, I think is what yeah. I paid for them. doesn't matter what's on them, as long as it's going to keep you warm for that, like, hour or two hours that you're going to be standing around. And then once the race starts, just you take it off and you throw it off safely off of the course, yep. not on the course. And then actually what happens with Disney races and a lot of other major races is they collect those clothes and then just donate it back to uh, shelters. So um, a lot of people don't know that um, when they first start with Disney races about them collecting it. So I always try to like let people know about that because I think it's awesome. And um, you can just safely throw it to either side of the road. Usually you'll see where people kind of have self-made piles. And then before the race, um, sometimes they'll actually have cardboard boxes, like, labeled for clothes, too. But know that Disney does go through and sweep, like, the entire course. They have trucks that go through the entire course before they reopen the roads to pick up trash and anything that's a donation. So even if um, you don't necessarily need to hold on to it till you see a pile. I would say maybe don't, like, throw it away, like, while you're in a theme park. Usually that they're well enough along the way to where you're not, you're past the point of figuring out what you're going to mm-hmm. stay in. Disney does a really great job at that. Um, and going back to to practicing in, you know, what you're going to race in, if it is going to be particularly cold and you decide maybe you need full-length leggings or you want a longer sleeve t-shirt to actually run the race in, Uh, Make sure that you practice and run in that and that you're going to be comfortable in that for running the 10K or the half, so on. It can be hard to do. I mean, in Florida, it probably, like, never really gets cold enough (laughs) except for the race days. But, you know, you can try, I guess. But um, let's see. Um, Other things about cold weather, if you happen to have a Mylar blanket from an old race or you've bought one, Um, Just keep in mind that you can't wear those while you go across the start line because it can mess with your timing chip. So the timing chip may not register that you've started, which then can lead to, obviously, they won't know your accurate time. And I imagine it may lead to issues if you're doing a challenge and they're trying to verify, you know, what you're doing. You can't really run comfortably with those wrapped around you anyway, so it's not like you're going to run the entire 13 miles with that. So you might as well just kind of toss it before you get to the start line. Yeah, and typically they are pretty good about telling you that oh, they you remind need to you. have it off. They remind you a million times, so you'll hear it. <laughs> um, and that's a, another good tip, too, is if they're handing them out at the end of the race, they usually never hand them out at the beginning. So don't go show up at the race thinking that they're going to hand you a Mylar blanket. They usually only hand them out at the end 
if the weather is cold. Mm -hmm. But if you happen to get one and um, you don't really use it, fold it up, stick it in your suitcase, and then you'll have one handy for the next race. race. Um, But you can also order them online if you you want. So now we're going to move into the exact opposite, and (laughs) this was the number one thing that we said you're going to encounter during the races, and this is heat. Again, Sunshine State, it gets hot. Sometimes you wake up on a race morning and you open the door at 2.30 in the morning (laughs) thinking, oh, it should be nice and cool, oh, it'll be a good temperature, and you just get slammed by the humidity. Well, and sometimes you'll have had a lovely temperature the day before, and then the next day you'll get slammed by (laughs) the heat and humidity. So it can happen so quick. Heat is something that is just... So awful. (laughs) Probably the best thing you can do, and this is going to be true of any race, is make sure you're drinking enough water leading up to it. Yes, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. You should be hydrating really up to the week before, and if you're training, you should always be hydrating. Yeah, but um, obviously keep an eye on the weather um, forecast. Um, Usually if it's going to be hot, 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 like at least that'll be accurate. The thing that'll probably change from day to day is more like rain. Um, And if you're seeing hot, 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 drink more and more water. (laughs) Yes, but also make sure that you are getting enough electrolytes because electrolytes help you store that water. If you're just having nothing but water, it's just going to pass through your system and you're not going to... Uh, retain it so having you know making sure you're getting enough sodium or alternating with different electrolyte options typically they have Powerade on the course Mm -hmm. they usually suggest that you alternate stands with water and the Powerade I usually do both if it's a super hot day because they offer the water and the Powerade at both and usually the Powerade's first Mm -hmm. so I will grab a Powerade and drink um, a couple you know sips of that and then I'll wash it down with the water because I don't like the way Bowery tastes. <laughs> so I always have to wash it down. Look into your nutrition as well. Yes. Um, you'll be probably using nutrition no matter what during the race. So uh, look and see if your nutrition has electrolytes in it. A lot of them do. With, Almost when you all look of at the will. goos and the chews, that usually has added electrolytes. If you're doing some alternate things like candy or things like that, you'll know that you're not having the electrolytes in those items. Another thing that you may need to consider when combating the heat is your pace. Uh, the extreme heat may not be the best time to go for a PR. Uh, what is it? Is it uh, a minute per mile or 30 seconds a mile for every like five degrees above 60 degrees or something like that? I don't like know that? what it is exactly, but there is a recommended slowdown pace for, for heat which you can, I'm sure, find online. (laughs) That is something to consider. And especially when you're doing a longer race, like a half marathon, you may not feel it right away. You'll feel it later on. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you'll be really hurting near the end. Yeah, and then another thing too, again, we keep talking about what you're going to wear. You may need to consider if your costume is going to be the coolest option for you. Right, yeah, so Disney races are obviously very popular for costumes, for dressing up like a character, for going with the theme of the race. Um, Unfortunately, unless you are really planning out uh, and thinking about your running while you're planning your costume, it may not be the most um, friendly for high heat conditions. (laughs) Um, I have seen people finish some of the hottest races in crazy huge like layered costumes and I've just been like in amazement that they've been able to do it but I will say more than I've seen people finish is I've seen discarded costumes on the side of the road so (laughs) so either be um prepared and make peace with the fact that you're discarding your costume no matter how much you've paid for it and you're probably not going to see it again because you can't really go collect it or um keep that in mind when you're building your costume. There are creative ways that you can uh, make a costume that's also heat and running friendly. Yep. And that goes again to practice in it. Make sure it's going to be comfortable and cool enough. If you find yourself excessively sweating after a mile on a 
very mild day, it may not be an appropriate costume to run yeah. a half marathon in. Also remember um, and train and see like if you can wear a hat or a visor while you're running and remember um, sunscreen. If you're out there for long enough and you develop some kind of burn, um, that will also be make you uncomfortable and can lead to like heat exhaustion, sun poisoning, you know, all these things where it might not affect you right at that moment, but it'll make the rest of your day at Disney very miserable. Definitely wearing a hat or a visor is a great option to keep the sun out of your eyes. It also typically can help keep the sweat out of your eyes. Yep. With that, make sure that you're wearing a hat that's lighter, um, a Don't. regular <laughs> Don't hat worry. like this one here may not be very good because it's just going to log sweat. Be aware of yourself while you're running and think about like if you're feeling normal, if you're feeling unusual and you need to stop at a med tent, uh, even just to ask the nurses and medical professionals who are there, like, here's what I'm feeling. Is this okay? They may be able to help guide you. Um, Disney does um, monitor the weather and put out advisories um, mm -hmm. based on the weather. I have run races where they have been in a red advisory. In a red advisory, which is like if the conditions are most extreme, they will um, suspend basically the time requirements. Um, they'll suspend uh, so that people aren't like racing harder. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, kind of pay attention to that. They post it at the expo, and I believe they usually also have it posted um, when you arrive race morning as well, so that you always know what it is. Yep, and they're pretty good. They'll post that on social media as well to help keep you yes. informed. Yes, follow them on social media is the best way to... Stay aware of what's going on. And then the tip that goes along with this is, so we've gone through all these different weather scenarios, is I say when you're going for a race, especially if you're traveling and you've paid a lot of money for this experience, is kind of pack for all contingencies. Now, if it's April and you're doing Star Wars, I 100% guarantee that it's not going to be freezing cold weather in April in Florida. Um, so you probably don't need to pack, you know, your cold weather clothes. But... Um, Bring an extra pair of shoes, bring some newspaper to help dry out your shoes, bring a poncho, like bring all the stuff even if you're not going to use it um, because, I mean, Murphy's Law, <laughs> if you don't have it, then it'll happen. <laughs> yep. As she just said, just be ready for any of those, and a lot of them are very easy to be ready for, right. honestly. Um, one other item to go with the heat um side of the race is if it's a really hot weekend and you're running a 10k and then running the half the next day um you may need to alter like your plans for after the 10k yeah um if it's a really hot day um don't maybe go to magic kingdom until midnight the night before and go all day because you'll probably not drink as much water when you're moving around and doing being distracted and you're also going to tire yourself out and you're yep. in the heat again which is also going to help like it's going to dehydrate you being out the day before so. well that's all we got for running through the weather in a run disney race thank you guys so much for watching if you guys have any other tips or any stories from you getting caught in terrible weather during run disney races or other races comment below and let us know and thank you guys so much for watching